The research I'm involved in at the moment is based around data visualisation and particularly creative data visualisation. So what does it mean for somebody to creatively visualise data as opposed to if somebody's doing it for science, medicine or for business? So the different approaches people take are very interesting and the motivations that they have are also very interesting. We've applied some of this creative data visualisation to the first year undergraduate experience. So we're getting students to collect and visualise their own data in an abstract way rather than just using a bar chart or a line chart. There's been a lot of practice in uh, people who are creatively visualising data, but at the same time there hasn't been so much research. So I'm starting to look into that area. And the other side of what I'm doing is creating new ways of uh, integrating data collection and visualisation into the undergraduate curriculum. So we had a large project this semester where we got 1,500 students to wear activity trackers and to log their nutrition. We also got them to visualise that data in a creative way rather than doing stats, which they'll have a chance to do later on. I use data in my research to visualise. So rather than collecting data, I'm more focused on how we can communicate it effectively to somebody who's going to be the end user of a product, such as a Apple Watch or a Fitbit that collects your activity. We're looking at how you can communicate that effectively to someone. So the big data set that we're working with at the moment is the Living Data Project. This was a project with a first year human biology subject. So their first experience with learning science in biology was to collect data that is going to be part of a large open data set. So there's people in uh, institutions like the Charles Perkins Center who are very excited about this because the students generally don't end up on the kind of trials that log the activity and the, and the nutrition that we're tracking. So they're fairly healthy, they're fairly fit, and they don't end up in hospital and on a on a long-term trial, they haven't got diabetes or cancer or anything like that. So this is an understudied group, and we've given them the experience of not only collecting data, but also having a chance to visualize that data. So we used an abstract representation for that. So rather than having a series of bar charts or line charts that you may have seen out of Excel, we had a different approach where they used a creative code platform called Processing to create their own visualizations based on some templates that we gave them. My favourite data visualisation would have to be data sketches by Shirley Wu and Nadine Bremer. We use this as kind of an inspiration for the templates we gave the students to create their own abstract data visualisations. But the thing I love about this is that although in research you'll often see a paper that says I've come up with some great new visualisation, these two uh, independent data visualisation gurus have uh, describe their process in a way that somebody else can look at their process and then repeat it themselves. And that's what I really love about this, these data visualizations. It was a, a year-long project and it's every month they had a look at a different data set. We used uh, Shirley Wu's example of movies to inspire the templates that we have. And they kind of look a little bit like flowers. So in our example, each day or each hour ended up being one petal on a larger flower. So we have small changes in somebody's activity or nutrition that they recorded themselves and that changes the shape or the appearance of the flower by just changing one of those petals. So we got some really nice um, output from that from the students. For me, the most important aspect of data is the accessibility. That is not just whether I can go onto a site and download the data from somewhere, but also if the data has enough of a description around it that helps me understand what it is showing. What relationships there are, how it was collected, what the limitations are. Those kind of things are really important to visualisation. In the future, data science is going to have an even greater impact on data visualisation. There's been so many examples of what has been commonly called chart junk. Chart junk is visualizations that have erroneous uh, visual elements that don't contribute and often take away and sometimes are often just flat out misleading. More data science and better data science will allow visualization to be more effective because it can be more honest, more reliable and more accurate. The one piece of advice I would have for a new data science student would be to always visualize your data. I'm sure you've heard this before and I'm sure you're probably going to hear it again. But if you haven't heard of Anscombe's Quartet, go and look it up on Wikipedia now.